important because a clay is a combination of all of these materials and they all play a role. They are all rather important. So um, looking at, at these, okay, so we've got this, this feldsbar and we've got this quartz and we know that our clays are essentially composed of two, or I'm sorry, three ingredients, uh, flint, feldsbar, and of course, clay. And this is the Grolic image we've seen over and over again. Here's the problem, okay? This is Grolic as we've seen. This is a two micron size bar. That's how close we have to get in. That is 50 times closer than we have with Grolic. This is a 20,000x magnification, whereas this is 500x magnification to see the raw grains. Okay, this is exceptionally fine material, and all clays are exceptionally fine. Even when we call something super coarse, as we'll look at uh, uh, again, and we already have, um, but when we put everything in perspective in this lecture, um, you'll find that this is incredibly fine. This square here, when resized and transposed onto this image of flint, is this tiny little square. Th those are the same size. We have to blow it up this far just to see it, because clays are crazy small. Okay, they are ultra fine and they make up the majority of our bodies. Okay, and so we, we sort of need to wrap our head around this because this is everywhere. So if we're mixing a clay, we've got this blend of these rocks. And I've mentioned before that flint and feldspar are essentially just rocks when it comes down to um, how they perform physically. Um, you know, that they are not flat platelets and that they don't really stick together and they wouldn't. Um, but, but that they are rocks, but we've got this majority of material that are these flat platelets that do stick together and that they are tiny, even compared to very, very fine materials. Like I said, these 325 mesh is super fine, but when you get down to the clay, it, it is so much finer than we can even conceive of. And so very, very, very small again. Now to blow this just out into scale. Okay. To put the feldspar and the flint uh, into scale, you can't even, this is, this is the corner of one of these. Okay. This isn't even a whole grain. Like this thing here looks like negative space. This is, this is an entire grain. Okay. Of the material, right? So, so the clay, which is the majority of what's in our body just takes up so much space and packs this space extra tight and just fills up all these negative spaces because these materials don't and never would. And we had talked in the previous lecture about, you know, that we need this high contact surface area. Um, for, for the clay to stick together because of the, the electromagnetic charge, of course, but also just for the very pragmatic application of sticking. If, if we tried to stick these two rocks together, they might have one point where they could hold, but not, not enough of a surface area to really take charge. And, and so the clay particles become rather, rather important for that, of course. So again, just all blown out. This curve here is now the human hair, just, you know, showing how absolutely fine this is. And this is this is coming down to the fact of clay is this tiny particle, but if you know, if you've started in, in the labs to, to mess around with clays and this clay versus that clay, that their performance, their respective uh, values have um, benefits and detractions. Okay, you pick this clay versus that clay and, and why and what, how, and we've talked about that a little.